This is Carl. Hello, Carl. And he suffers from heartburn. He isn't alone. Damien here also has peptic ulcers. But how does this happen? Acid reflux is caused when stomach acid bypasses the lower esophagus sphincter and into the esophagus, either by failure of the lower esophagus sphincter to close properly as a valve, overproduction of acid, or hiatal hernia. This backflow of acid and stomach content can lead to the painful feelings behind the breastbone that gives the namesake, heartburn. But how does the acid even form in the first place, I hear you ask? Let's take a closer look. Gastric acid. A fluid in the stomach is secreted when gastrin stimulates the release of histamine from the endocrine like cells, or ECL. These endocrine cells are found on gastric mucosa and respond to somatostatin and neural mediators. The secretion itself is controlled by triumvirate 3, histamine, which acts on the H2 rad receptor, and acetylcholine on the muscarinic receptor and gastrin itself. Histamine's effect on the parietal cell is to activate adenylate cyclase, leading to the elevation of intracellular cyclic AMP concentrations and activation of protein kinase A, or PKA. One effect of PKA activation is the phosphorylation of cytoskeletal skip proteins produced in the transport of hydrogen potassium ATPase from cytoplasm to plasma membrane. Binding of acetylcholine and gastrin both result in elevation of intracellular calcium concentrations. At the plasma membrane, hydrogen potassium ATPase can access potassium chloride in the extracellular region and exchange it for intracellular protons. This exchange forms hydrochloric acid and acid secretion. The epithelium of the stomach is usually resistant to the damaging effects of gastric acids and other insults. However, in some cases of excessive secretion of gastric acid, it is a major problem leading to gastritis, gastric ulcers, and peptic acid disease. As a consequence, the parietal cell and the mechanisms used to secrete acid are often targets for treatment. To treat acid reflux, there are a variety of substances that are capable of reducing gastric acid secretion, including prostaglandin E2 and several peptide hormones, including secretin, gastric inhibitory peptide, glucagon, and somatostatin. Due to histamine's role in acid secretion, H2 receptor antagonists are quite effective in inhibiting acid secretion like cimetidine, renanidine, fumatidine, and nizetidine. Antihistamines that engage H1 receptors, such as those used to treat colds, have no effect on acid secretion. Acid secretion is absolutely dependent on the function of hydrogen potassium ATPase or the protein pump located in the canicular membrane of the parietal cell. Drugs developed to compete non-competitively so that bind and inactivate the ADPase result in strong inhibition of acid secretion. Omeprazole is one such acid-activated drug that binds covalently to the two cysteines at the ADPase, resulting in its irreversible inactivation. It is believed that the chemical burn from continuous reflux causes damages to the esophageal tissue. A recent study suggests that it is not acid reflux that causes gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, but rather inflammatory responses prompted by cytokines but that is a topic for another day. The acid itself, however, is also the main cause of peptic ulcers. Peptic ulcers are a lesion in the stomach mucosa caused by a digestive action of pepsin and stomach acid. This is a result of an imbalance between defensive factors and aggravating factors, which end up damaging the mucosal layer of the stomach. Peptic ulcers are categorized as H. pylori positive, H. pylori negative and non-NSAID associated, and lastly, NSAID associated. H. pylori positives are caused by a bacteria, Helicobacter pylori, that is found to have infected half the world's population, gastroduodenal mucosa. But only 5-10% of the infected people develop ulcers. In the stomach, H. pylori causes an inflammatory response in the gastric mucosa by epithelium-derived cytokines, which leads to an influx of neutrophils and macrophages, and subsequently release of lysosomal enzymes, leukotrienes, and reactive oxygen species. These end up hampering mucosal defenses and stimulating the formation of ulcers. The ulcers associated to NSAID occur in 20% of NSAID users. This occurs as a result of the suppression from COX inhibitors on the synthesis of gastric prostaglandins, which are important in mucosal integrity. Treatment for peptic ulcers include H2 receptor antagonists, proton pump inhibitors, triple chemotherapy, and sequential regimens for H. pylori. H2 antagonists treat ulcers by reducing acid secretion that could damage the weakened mucosal layer. 
The antihistamines used for the treatment of peptic ulcers and GERD are reversible competitive antagonists of H2 receptors. These H2 receptors are cimetidine, famotidine, and nizotidine. These drugs treat the condition by blocking H2 receptors on parietal cells to decrease acid secretion. H2 antagonists are usually taken orally and have a rapid onset of less than 1 hour and a duration of 12 hours. The elimination of H2 antagonists occur by a combination of hepatic and renal metabolism. The most common side effects from H2 antagonists are headaches, dizziness, and diarrhea. This occurs from a blockade of histamine at H2 receptor sites which allow histamines to act on other histamine receptors types such as H1 receptors in the GIT smooth muscles. This causes a contraction on the GIT to facilitate diarrhea. A H2 antagonist drug interaction occurs with cimetidine, which is not clinically used. Because of its inhibitory effects on cytochrome P450 aka C4YP, CYP is a hepatic enzyme that metabolizes drugs in the liver and this affects the clearance of drugs present in the body. This leads to adverse effects and an example is warfarin, which is an anticoagulant. Uh, this is metabolized by CYP, which, which when combined with cimetidine, uh, causes hypoprothrombinemia. Uh, cimetidine also interferes with vitamin D metabolism and endocrine functions.